Batman Rogue Files, Bane. More than three decades ago, Bane's father received a life sentence from the Santa Priscan government for his role in a failed revolution. He fled the country, but Santa Priscan law demanded that his son take his place. The child that would become Bane was raised in the darkness inside Penaduro Prison, mostly in a pit called the Cavidad Oscuro. Bane killed dozens of inmates and engineered a jailbreak when experiments with the drug Venom gave him monstrous strength. Winding up in Gotham City, Bane found a way to exhaust me. By freeing all the villains from Arkham Asylum, he then crippled me by snapping my spine. Jean-Paul Valley donned my cowl for a time and beat Bane into a coma. Eventually, Bane would recover and return to a life of wickedness. Batman Rogue Files. Poison Ivy. Botanist Pamela Isley was a shrinking violet when she went to work for famed scientist Dr. Jason Woodrue. Woodrue performed experiments on Isley, hoping to create a human-plant hybrid like himself. He succeeded all too well, creating the ravishing but deadly Poison Ivy. Where Isley was gangly and unremarkable, Ivy was gorgeous and unforgettable. Isley's porcelain skin soon took on green pigmentation, as chlorophyll replaced her human blood. As Ivy, she exuded man-maddening pheromones and natural toxins. She was Poison Ivy in more than just name. Ironically, the sun-loving Ivy soon found herself drawn to gloomy Gotham City, where she sowed the seeds of a criminal career to fund her true cause as a green gorilla. In recent years, Poison Ivy has only grown more powerful as she realized her connection to the green. The elemental force representing foliage is the same one that Swamp Thing taps into. While her motives may seem altruistic, Poison Ivy is not to be viewed as anything but a criminal. Batman Rogue Files Batmite The curious creature known as Batmite claims to be my greatest fan. Winging his way to Earth from a bizarre alien dimension, he wears a homemade costume that looks like mine. His utility belt is unlike mine, though. It has no useful accoutrements, but with his various magical powers, he has no need for tools or weapons. On his infrequent visits to Earth, Batmite usually enjoys watching me in action. Unfortunately, he frequently feels compelled to use his magical abilities to test my fighting prowess and detective skills. More often than not, I usually order this diminutive mischief-making imp to go back to his home dimension until he agrees to behave properly here on Earth. Batman Rogue Files Victor Zaz Victor Zaz suffered no horrific childhood trauma and can claim no strange jumbling of his brain chemistry. Zaz grew up with love, money, and privilege. He made a fortune in his 20s. Despite his success, though, he felt empty inside, and he came to feel the same about everyone else. People were just automatons shuffling around in search of amusement. Convinced he should kill himself, he decided instead to give others the release of death. Since that time, Victor Zaz has killed hundreds of people, usually with a knife. He slits his victims' throats and leaves them in lifelike poses. Zaz will generally prey on young women, but has no qualms over who he murders. For every life he takes, he cuts a mark into his own skin. As a result, he's covered from head to toe in self-inflicted scars. Zaz has been imprisoned in Arkham several times, but has always escaped. He operates on no preset pattern, and his fixation on thrill-killing makes him one of my deadliest opponents. Batman Rogue Files Red Hood the Red Hood was a criminal alias used by the man who would become the Joker. The Joker would reuse that gimmick a couple of times later on. It was years before the new Red Hood would show up in Gotham. When my former protege, Jason Todd, the second Robin, returned, he did so using the alias Red Hood. A fitting choice as it was the Joker himself who killed him. The new Red Hood battled crime in Gotham with lethal force, proving that he could do something that I couldn't. Ultimately, his goal was to bring an end to Batman and Robin. Gaining criminal territory for himself, he soon wound up in a war with the Black Mask. Fortunately, though, with time and help from Dick, Jason was able to start to see the error of his ways and be accepted back into the Bat family. It does bring me satisfaction that I can close the Rogue File on Red Hood. For now. Batman Rogue Files Killer Moth Drury Walker the man was little more than a joke. As Killer Moth, he offered his services as paid protector to Gotham's gangsters. Despite his arsenal of ingenious weaponry, including his signature cocoon gun, the colorful Killer Moth was bested by me at every turn, leaving his clients both irate 
and incarcerated. Barbara Gordon once dressed as Batgirl for a costume party, and she defeated Killer Moth, earning Walker even further ridicule. Finally, he made a deal with the devil, Neuron, who gave Walker his heart's desire. What he wanted most was to be feared. What he received in exchange for his soul was metamorphosis into a real Killer Moth, the man-eating Chiraxis. Chiraxis repeatedly turned up in the Gotham area seeking sustenance to survive, usually crossing paths with Robin. Eventually, he was torn in half by Superboy Prime. In recent years, others have shown up taking the Killer Moth mantle, but I'm going to need to see more than an untrained copycat before I see Killer Moth as a real threat. Batman Rogue Files Egghead Edgar Heed was a professor of the private school Gotham Academy, where he had a love for eggs and egg-themed puns. Egghead went on to be a criminal active in New York City, leading a small gang of criminals dressed in egg helmets. He frequently made egg-themed puns in this criminal career, and used egg-themed weapons. I came across Egghead early in my career, and he has spent most of his time since then in Arkham. I guess one other notable time he might have popped up would have been when Two-Face had him try to kill me. He failed. Currently, Egghead is not a threat. Yes, it seems an exorbitant amount of you were very excited about seeing me do Egghead. I hope it met your expectations.